Okay, super quick, how does the condenser and split work? So let's say you go to your condensers, okay? You're gonna go to your service, you're gonna go to your manual relays, right, split valve. We're gonna turn this on, right? So let's say we turn it on. So now that's manually on. Typically in these type of controllers, you're gonna have like a board and point. What that controller does is that controller will send a signal to your board and point, and off one of those board and points, it's gonna send a signal to your split valve. You can see your discharge comes out, going, we're following it, goes out to your condenser. Just wanted to show you your board and point for this type of setup. It's gonna be located in those electrical boxes on your condenser. Now, if we follow this out, we can see that it's communicating with this split valve over here. That's your condenser split valve. Now we're at the actual split valve, right? So you can see one is going this way, one is going out that way. Split, it splits the condenser in half. This is one half, this is the other half, right? So how do you know what side is split? Well, if you turn it on like I did, and we'll just verify because this valve might operate differently, but you can see that this solenoid is on. So this is in split when the solenoid is on, okay? And how does that work? Well, typically there's like a rod in there with a hole, and if you suck the rod up here, that hole goes up there, and it blocks off this one right here. Now, a way to verify is you can look, and when you look down on the bottom side of your split side, you'll see that little tiny, you see that right there, that little tiny pipe coming out of that split side? That is what you would call a pump down pipe, okay? And what that pipe is doing, it's removing the liquid refrigerant out of this side of the out of the, this side of the split. And as that refrigerant returns back into the system, it's going to find its way back to the receiver. And we'll go into that in a second. Now, this split valve, you can see one side is hooked up to high pressure. The other side, if we follow it, it's hooked into that pump down valve. Why? Because when you put it in split, you need to create. If there's all this pressure over here, it can't slide it to close it so it needs to evacuate that pressure and put it into that um, pump down over there which is a lower pressure now on this side when this goes off it uses this pressure to push out the piston and there's probably a spring in there also this is just kind of like an assist so what's happening now is so this is on closes off this side of the condenser okay and that check valve prevents any liquid from going into it. So now the only way out of this condenser, that side of the condenser, you can see that it's split right there. Those pipes are separate from those pipes, is now that little pump down right there. So if we follow that pump down, we're gonna follow it, follow it, follow it. You see it goes inside, we're gonna go take a look. So from here, you can see that pump down comes, comes this way, out here. And it goes through this capillary tube and back into the rack. Typically speaking, there's going to be some kind of like TXV thing, not TXV, solenoid valve, usually like here or sometimes out by the thing. The condenser that typically when it goes into split mode, it will then um, open it and send it through. This rack doesn't seem to have that. Also, on a lot of puff downs, instead of a capillary tube, there's actually a TXV instead of a capillary tube. So why do they pump it down? Because during the winter months, when it's really, really, really cold out, if you leave that refrigerant out there and you don't pump it down, more often times than not, it'll actually stay out there. It'll get so low pressure, it'll get stuck and it'll take a while to get out. So you prevent that by sucking it out while it's at a decent pressure. So, you know, right now the pressure's like, you know, 180 or or something like that. That suction pressure 60. So 180 is greater than 60. Well, it migrate to this suction header. Now this capillary tube or the TXV, the reason why it's on there is just so it doesn't blast refrigerant into this fella and then uh, you know have it take too much of a drink of it. Now this one is interesting because it seems like it actually just allows a constantly slow drip of refrigerant from the condenser. My guess is that's a type of desuperheating for this rack 
to ensure that those compressors are cool um, when they're running. And this would only activate during a, a season in which it's in full. So that's my theory on what they're using this for, is they're using this to cool down the condensers, I mean the, the compressors, and that's why there isn't a solenoid valve on this particular version. So, sorry, my voice is kind of shot. Hope that helps you. That's what a split valve does in a nutshell. Shuts off one half of the condenser. The reason it does that is to keep the head pressure high enough so the whole system works. Maybe I'll go into a little bit of theory. So yeah, that was a video on uh, split condensers. Um, how they do what they do, well, how they work, right? And now, uh, you know, I'm gonna do another video eventually on, I guess I'll do a theory video on why do we even need them. So be on the lookout for that, please. Uh, like, subscribe and all that. Uh, you know, hit the bell, do whatever you wanna do. Hope you learn something, that's how you do it.